Failing FCC or CE emissions testing can kill your product before it ever ships. And what makes this failure so devastating is it's not something that you can patch or fix with a simple board tweak. If your PCB layout wasn't designed with emissions compliance in mind from the start, well, you're stuck with an expensive redesign. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through nine of the most common PCB design errors that cause products to fail FCC and CE certification. And more importantly, I'm going to show you how you can avoid these mistakes before it's too late. All right, let's get started. Mistake number one is a poor ground plane strategy. A solid continuous ground plane is one of the best defenses against electromagnetic interference, but many designs break the ground into pieces with splits, cutouts, or thin bridges between the different sections. Return currents are then forced to detour around these gaps, forming large loops that then radiate noise. This increases emissions and creates unpredictable coupling between parts of the circuit. This issue is especially pronounced in two-layer boards. Without dedicated internal layers, the ground plane gets fragmented by signal and power traces. Even if you're careful, it's almost impossible to maintain a clean return path on a two-layer board. Trying to split analog and digital grounds on a two-layer board often backfires. The theory may sound good, but in practice, signals end up taking long, noisy paths to return, making emissions worse, not better. And once your layout is built this way, there's no quick fix. You can't just solder your way out of a bad ground strategy. Most of the time, it's going to take a full redesign. A four-layer board with ground and power planes is often worth the extra cost if you care about certification. And regardless of the layer count, the rule is simple. Give your signals a low inductance return path and don't break up your ground unless you absolutely have to. Check the description below to grab your Design Mistakes Checklist Bundle. You'll get this checklist here with all of the mistakes that I discuss in this video that fail FCC and CE certification. Plus, you'll get all these other checklists to help you avoid costly mistakes on your design. Links in the description below, or you can just scan this QR code right here. Mistake number two is large, high current loop areas. So any loop carrying current becomes an antenna. The bigger the loop, the more it radiates. And this applies to power inputs, motor drivers, LEDs, and switching regulators. Really anywhere where fast changing current flows through a closed path. The worst offenders are loops with rapid current transitions. When those loops span large distances, they generate strong magnetic fields and wide band emissions. Even something as simple as placing a bypass cap too far from a microcontroller can increase loop area and radiated noise. The key is to minimize loop size. That means short, direct traces between components and tightly coupled return paths. If you're routing a switching power regulator, then be sure to put the switch, diode, and cap as close together as physically possible. If you're routing a high current power rail, then avoid routing it in a loop around the board. Small changes in loop size can have a massive impact on emissions. If those emissions exceed FCC or CE limits, even slightly, well, then you'll fail certification. And if you skip testing and ship a noisy board into the world without certification, well, you might just find the FCC knocking on your door one day. Oh, crap. I think that's the FCC. Oh, no, wait a minute. That's impossible. I followed my checklist. Mistake number three, bad connector placement and routing. So every cable that connects to your board is a potential antenna. If high speed or noisy signals travel through poorly routed traces into those connectors, well, that energy easily can radiate from the cable itself. Even low voltage signals like USB, HDMI, or Ethernet can cause major issues. If the return current doesn't have a clean path alongside the signal, the imbalance creates common mode noise that radiates through the cable shield or ground. Many designs route signals to connectors using long or convoluted paths with no nearby ground. This breaks the transmission line symmetry and increases emissions. If you're routing any connector with high frequency signals, make sure the return path is tightly coupled and continuous and avoid putting noisy signals near I.O. unless they're properly filtered. Mistake number four, unshielded oscillators and crystals near the board edge. Crystals and oscillators may be small components, but they generate high frequency signals that can easily radiate. 
When these parts are placed near the edge of the board or beside connectors, that energy can couple into nearby cables or radiate directly into free space. If the crystal sits next to a USB connector, for example, the cable can act as a perfect antenna, amplifying emissions from the crystal dramatically. The best solution is simple. Place oscillators near the center of the board and surround them with ground copper on all sides. Add stitching vias around them to contain the field. These parts are small and easy to overlook, but when placed incorrectly, they can ruin your entire test results. Mistake number five, no shielding or guard traces on noisy sections. Some parts of your PCB will be noisier than others, like switching nodes, clock buffers, RF circuits. If you leave them wide open, that noise couples into nearby traces and radiates out of the enclosure. Simple shielding techniques can stop that noise at the source. A grounded metal shield can reduce emissions by 10 dB or more, enough to pass a test that you would have failed otherwise. But shielding isn't just about metal cans. Guard traces can be just as effective in many cases. And a single grounded trace placed between a noisy line and a sensitive line can dramatically reduce the capacitive coupling between those two. These techniques cost little during layout, but skipping them can cost tens of thousands of dollars in redesigns and lab testing fees. Think of shielding as a containment strategy. If you let the noise spread freely, it will find a way to escape, but if you guide and block it from the start, you'll stay under the limit. Mistake number six, improper high-speed trace routing. High-speed digital traces like clocks, USB, HDMI, memory buses, all of these can act like antennas if they're routed improperly. The most common problems are poor return paths and broken plane continuity. If a trace crosses a gap or a split in the ground plane, well, the return current is forced to take a longer, indirect path. That imbalance causes radiation. Differential pairs are especially sensitive. If they're not routed symmetrically or if the impedance is inconsistent, they generate common mode noise, even when the signals still appear functional. Certification labs can scan the entire spectrum, so even minor layout flaws can create emissions at multiple test frequencies. To keep emissions low, route these signals with consistent spacing, minimize stubs and vias, and keep them tightly coupled to a continuous reference plane. Mistake number seven, switching regulator layout mistakes. Switching regulators are one of the most common causes of certification failures, and they often look harmless in the schematic, but the layout is what turns them into noise-generating machines. Rapid current switching, poor grounding, and long routing paths create electromagnetic interference, even if the circuit seems to work fine. Many designers end up modifying the datasheet layout to save space or make routing easier, but switching regulators behave more like RF circuits than power supplies, and small layout changes can have big consequences. And that's why it's always best if you follow closely the layout recommendations provided in the datasheet by the manufacturer. Mistake number eight, poor layer stackup design. Your PCB stackup plays a critical role in controlling EMI. If signal layers are too far from ground, loop inductance increases and radiation rises. Many teams try to save costs by using a basic four-layer board or even worse, using a two-layer board, and they don't have an optimized PCB stackup. But without careful planning, the stackup can actually make EMI worse. Even worse yet is when power and signal layers are placed adjacent to each other without a solid ground between them. That causes return current paths to wander and increases loop area. A well-designed four or six layer stackup with tight coupling between signal and ground gives your layout a strong foundation. It minimizes emissions and simplifies routing. The difference may not show up in your lab, but it will show up during EMI testing. And a small stackup adjustment can mean the difference between a pass and a fail. Don't forget to grab your free design mistakes checklist bundle. Whether you're designing the product yourself or outsourcing the design, these checklists will help you prevent costly mistakes and redesigns. The link is in the description below, or you can just scan this QR code right there. Mistake number nine, no controlled impedance for critical signals. Controlled impedance is essential for high speed and RF signals. 
Without it, reflections occur, leading to signal distortion and radiated spikes. Your board may function just fine in a development setup, but those reflections show up during emissions testing and can fail you instantly. The lab doesn't care if your device works or not. They just care about how much noise it emits into the air. Thankfully, most CAD tools make impedance control pretty straightforward. You can define the trace width, spacing, and stack up, and the software handles the rest. But this only works if you set it up early. If you wait until layout is done, you've already lost your chance to fix it without starting over. If you'd like our help avoiding all of these costly mistakes, then definitely check out my Hardware Academy program. If you found this video helpful, then check out this video here on ESP32 design mistakes that can sabotage your product, or this video here, which is all about PCB design mistakes that can destroy production.